Which is best for TikTok Live? Is it Live Studio? Is it OBS? Or is it even Streamlabs Desktop? Let's look at the pros and cons of all three of these pieces of software. But I'm going to start by doing what the YouTube gurus tell you not to do. And they say don't answer the question within the first 30 seconds. But I really think that content is king here. And you can actually be successful on all three of these bits of software. So regardless of which one you're on, focus on making the best possible content. But with that said, there are of course some very important differences which we should still debate. So let's dive right in and we'll start with Live Studio and then we'll come on to Streamlabs and OBS. I've also got some data for you showing what my viewers are using and I'll tell you what I use myself. Let's begin with Live Studio and you can unlock this between 500 and 10,000 followers or you can skip that requirement by joining a free to join agency and I'll put a link for that in the description. And what we'll do is we'll go through four pros and four cons of each piece of software. So welcome to the slideshow. Let's start with Live Studio. And of course, the first pro is that this is made by TikTok. And so therefore, this program just has access to data about your live stream that both Streamlabs and OBS simply cannot get. To give TikTok credit, they've also made the setup process pretty user friendly. So if you're a beginner and you don't want to set up scenes, sources and themes, you can do it with just a few clicks when you first load up Live Studio. And because it's made by TikTok, there are features inside Live Studio that are unique to Live Studio, which OBS and Streamlabs simply doesn't have. That of course includes things like multi-guest and compatibility mode before it was removed, as well as things like the guessing game and the gift animations. And then finally for the pros, simply in terms of gaining access, it's the easiest. As I said earlier, it's usually just a follower requirement, anywhere from 500 to 10,000 followers, based on whether TikTok thinks you are a gaming account. So there's no hoop jumping, such as applying to join a free to join agency for a stream key or applying via the website or the Falcon application to get access to Streamlabs. But as I said earlier, if you don't have access, you can still do those methods. I'll put some links in the description for both what I call the Falcon application and TikTok live agencies or creator networks, which can get you access to Live Studio. Now, of course, there is some pretty important to note cons of Live Studio. And really the biggest one is that people are always reporting bugs and issues with it, even though we're now well over two years into the development of it. Even last night myself, I logged into one of my accounts that has 98,000 followers and it was saying I didn't have access to Live Studio. So I had to just jump through a few hoops by going on the website and eventually I got my access back. But that's just an example of one of the many bugs that is built into Live Studio. On top of that, it is also quite resource intensive on your CPU and or GPU. And it lacks the powerful settings, plugins, and customization that both OBS and Streamlabs can provide. As an example, OBS is full of different audio filters that can improve your microphone. And so is Streamlabs. And of course, OBS allows a whole host of open source plugins to be installed, which Live Studio simply doesn't allow. And of course, finally, this is only for TikTok Live. So you are just stuck with TikTok Live unless you want to use two different live streaming programs. I think multi-streaming is really important to increase your monetization potential and reach especially even more important given the threat of TikTok being banned. So that is definitely a major downside to just using Live Studio, the lack of multi-streaming. So moving to OBS, to get access to OBS Live Streaming, you need either a stream key from a free to join agency. And again, I'll put a link in the description. And you can also try the Streamlabs plugin, which we'll mention at the end. So back to our slideshow, let's look at four pros and four cons of OBS. And of course, the one a lot of people value is the efficiency of it. Again, on your computer resources, your GPU and your CPU. Because it's open source, it means anybody's able to develop it and improve it. And that means over the years, people have made it extremely efficient. And it is the best piece of software in terms of it using the least resources on your PC for streaming or recording. And the fact that it's open source means that anybody can create plugins for it. As you guys know, my favorite plugin is Atom Vertical. That just gives you a landscape and a vertical canvas. But of course, there is a ton of plugins which just lets you enhance your stream or recording the way you want it. On top of that, there is also a ton more settings compared to Live Studio. As I mentioned earlier on, there is a ton more audio settings, for example, to try and get your microphone sounding better. 
And basically on every single source you add, there's a ton of different filters and effects that you can add. And of course, because it's open source, people have developed multi-streaming plugins for it. So as I mentioned earlier with Atom Vertical, you can stream from one OBS to multiple platforms and you don't even need multiple cameras. And again, we'll talk about it at the end. You can also use the Streamlabs plugin for OBS to multi-stream too. Now, even OBS has its cons, and I think the first major one is it can feel very overwhelming when you first set it up. It can be a quite intimidating interface. Once you get the hang of it, it is fantastic, but there is a steep learning curve. And if you're currently on that steep learning curve, I think the main thing I would say is just focus on adding scenes and adding sources. Really, the key of it is just adding whatever source you want. For example, display capture to show your screen and then video capture device to show your camera. And those are basically the most two important sources on OBS. And unfortunately, it does need a stream key to use OBS for TikTok. Now, is that really a con? Because you can get them for free by joining a free to join agency, otherwise known as a creator network. My page in the description, by the way, has a whole host of details, including a 12 minute explainer video. You might be wondering what's the catch, for example, why is it free? That's all explained in the description. But I'm listing this as a con because it does usually take up to 15 days after joining a creator network, aka agency, to get your stream key. And there's basically in 2024, no way around that. And of course, OBS is lacking TikTok specific features. For example, you can't directly see the view count inside OBS. You can't see the chat with the gift animations. You can't do multi-guest or live battles when it eventually arrives for PC streamers. There is, of course, workarounds you can do for some of these. For example, you can add a Tickfinity chat doc to OBS to see your chat, but it does certainly lack specific TikTok features that only Live Studio has. And by default, both Live Studio and Streamlabs have themes built in, which you can install with just a few clicks. Of course, you can install plugins such as the Streamlabs plugin for OBS to add themes into OBS Studio, but by default, it doesn't come with these. So that just means it might take a bit more work with OBS to get your stream looking good. Now let's move on to the pros and cons of Streamlabs desktop. And there's two ways to stream from this. Number one is to get a stream key from a creator network. Again, links in description for that, it is free. And number two is you can now just apply to go live directly from Streamlabs without going through an agency and I'll put that link in the description as well. So again back to the slideshow let's look at four pros and four cons and this is a big one for me in my opinion Streamlabs out of the three is the easiest for multi-streaming. So I have been using Streamlabs to multi-stream for years now. You can stream for three to two platforms using the Streamlabs dual output but I use Streamlabs Ultra which lets me stream up to 10 platforms and it just sends one upload stream of data. What happens is that data goes to the Streamlabs servers and then the Streamlabs servers do all the work of sending it to up to 10 different places. So again, one camera, one upload stream of data, and I can multi-stream up to 10 places. Again, why do I want to do that? To increase your reach, to protect yourself from false bans or outright platform bans like might be happening with TikTok in the US. And again, to increase my potential to earn money. And again, while you can multi-stream from OBS, it's even easier, in my opinion, from Streamlabs desktop. It's also more beginner friendly than OBS. While Streamlabs is just built on top of the OBS infrastructure, they have basically made it look a bit cleaner and nicer to use for a new user. So while OBS doesn't come with themes built in and you need to add plugins, Streamlabs does have themes built straight in. It has some both free ones and paid ones with Ultra. And by the way, if you want to try Ultra for $9 off, you can use my affiliate link, which I'll put in the description. And Streamlabs desktop even has themes for both landscape and vertical mode, so you can use them with TikTok and YouTube Shorts live streaming. They also have one-click themes for your alerts for Twitch and YouTube. And I mentioned it briefly earlier, but because there is two ways to unlock access compared to just the one stream key method with OBS, it is potentially easier to get access. So again, you can either join a free creator network, aka agency, or you can just use the Streamlabs application form. And because there's two methods, that should mean more people get access compared to OBS. And again, that also means it's not linked to a follower requirement like Live Studio, which sometimes needs up to 10,000 followers. Of course, there is some cons of Streamlabs to discuss, and although Streamlabs is built on top of the OBS infrastructure, they made the decision not to allow plugins to be installed on it. 
and it is therefore by default not as customizable as OBS, but it is still more customizable because it has more options and settings than Live Studio. And again, because it is built on top of OBS, but Streamlabs has added stuff on top, it is more resource intensive on your GPU and CPU than OBS is. That said, if you've got a mid-range PC or a gaming laptop, most people don't have issues. Although I do still see some people on Twitter X sometimes reporting issues with the resource intensivity of Streamlabs. And of course, I briefly mentioned it earlier, but Streamlabs really is built on the so-called freemium model. Now, yes, there is some free themes and yes, you can multi-stream for free using dual output to two platforms. But if you want to add more multi-stream platforms, if you want even more themes for both your widgets and just your overlays, you do need to buy Streamlabs Ultra. Honestly, I think the free tier of Streamlabs is great for most people. But again, if you want to try Ultra with my affiliate link, that both supports my work and it'll give you $9 off the first month. And of course, finally, just like OBS, it is lacking TikTok specific features such as compatibility mode, gift animations, multi-guest. With that all said, what am I currently using? Well, I kind of hinted at it earlier on. I am currently using Streamlabs desktop. And again, for me, multi-streaming is big. Look at all the different platforms that I've got added here. Because Streamlabs makes it so easy, for me, it's a no-brainer. That's why I use Streamlabs desktop. But I said it at the start, content is king here. I think you can be successful on any platform. That said, what do most of my community use? Well, here's your answer. Based on 149 votes, exactly 50% of my community is using TikTok Live Studio, and the other 50% are split between OBS and Streamlabs, 36% with OBS, and 14% including myself on Streamlabs desktop. So honestly, if we just say it's 50-50 between Live Studio and other pieces of software, that again reinforces my point that content is king. Focus on making the highest quality stream possible. Now this might sound crazy, but you can actually kind of combine Streamlabs, OBS and Live Studio all together in one. So you can use the Streamlabs multi-stream features with the plugin for OBS, and then you'd use the OBS virtual camera and send it to Live Studio. That way you'd be multi-streaming everywhere except TikTok inside OBS, and you'd still have the TikTok specific features because you're also using Live Studio. And I'll put on screen my guide for the Streamlabs plugin for OBS and how to use the virtual camera to send OBS to Live Studio.